Our next session features two Davids, our guest David Montag from Google and Neo4j Zone, David Allen. If you have questions during the presentation, please submit them via the questions tab. We'll do a brief Q&A at the end of the session. So without further ado, here's Lance Walter, CMO of Neo4j, who will introduce this session. All right, thanks very much, Marilee. We've worked closely with Google for a couple of years now to make sure that Neo4j Aura takes advantage of the scale and security and functionality of the Google Cloud Platform, and we're really excited to bring you this session featuring architects from both Google and Neo4j. David Montag is an enterprise cloud architect for Google and has been with the company for more than three years. He, prior to that, he has many years of experience working with graph databases in roles as a network and software engineer, as well as working as a pre-sales consultant. David holds a master's degree in computer science from Lynn Sherping University. David Allen is on the Neo4j team as a partner solution architect and joined the company a few years ago, coming out of the Neo4j developer community. David has extensive technology experience. He's worked at organizations including the Department of Defense in the U.S., Booz Allen Hamilton, and has held roles as a principal engineer as well as a chief technology officer. David Allen holds a bachelor's degree in computer science and a master's in information systems from Virginia Commonwealth University. Well, we've got a couple of big brains to tell us a lot about how Neo4j works with Google for your benefit. So I'm going to get out of the way and bring up David and David to tell us more. Welcome, David. Welcome, David. Hi there. Thanks, Lance. I'm glad to be here today with David Montag to talk about some of the things that we've been working on in our partnership with Google. We're going to be discussing Google Cloud and why Neo4j chose to build Aura on GCP. Over to you, David. Thanks, David. I'm David Montag, and I'm an enterprise cloud architect at Google. Before we start, let me bring you back to 2012. Tesla stock was worth less than 1% of today's value. 4K TVs were $20,000. Windows Phone was a thing. Barack Obama did a Reddit AMA. And Instagram was an independent company. At the time, I actually worked for Neo4j in California. In fact, here's a snapshot of the 2012 Neo4j Bay Area office. And like electric cars, uh, awareness of graph technology was still in its infancy. And uh, Google Cloud had just unveiled the Compute Engine, which was our first virtual machine product. Fast forward to 2021. Graph databases are today used in production across the Fortune 500. And at Google Cloud, uh, our, we really had our, our strongest growth year yet. Fantastic growth. And this all happened in, in eight to nine years. And so imagine what the next eight years could hold in store for us in terms of change. Uh, and, and that's really what we're solving for with our customers. So today I wanna give you some color on the state of Google Cloud. So in, in lightning talk style, I wanna take you through some things that Google Cloud can do for you. First, three differentiated uh, platform um, aspects and three differentiated customer journeys. And then we'll talk about Aura on GCP. Our customers choose Google Cloud to build cloud native applications. This means that they're able to develop and bring services to market faster using serverless infrastructure and modern CICD practices. Second, they develop services that are scalable and reliable on Google Cloud, building on the world's largest private encrypted network and Kubernetes, which was created at Google. Third, they reduce their cost and effort spent keeping the lights on, and they lean on our managed services so that they can really focus on their code and apply things like the SRE methodology, which uh, we use to run all of Google's systems. As an example, we work closely with PayPal to support them in their modernization of their entire application landscape. Our customers also choose Google Cloud for their data and analytics needs. And this means that they build empowered organizations where we collaborate with them on building a data strategy. We also create a path toward uh, becoming a more data-driven company and really unlocking data for everyone in their company to, to make use of. Second, they launch new products and services to unlock new revenue and 
they really benefit from the st strong security of Google Cloud. And uh, they also benefit from having a platform that really operates globally at Google scale. And third, they're really able to focus on their own business using our serverless data systems like BigQuery with zero maintenance needed, uh, which also powers all of Google's internal analytics needs. As an example, Twitter moved 300 petabytes and over 10,000 servers to GCP as part of a large modernization aimed at really improving their company agility. Lastly, our customers choose Google Cloud to advance their capabilities in AI and ML. And this means that they deliver intelligent solutions using our AI platform and our industry solutions. And second, long-term, AI will drive this expectation for every product to be intelligent. And we help our customers navigate that journey using tools like AutoML, uh, where Google automatically creates state-of-the-art machine learning models uh, for your specific problems. And we use TensorFlow, which is the framework that Google created and that Google uses for machine learning. Third, Applying machine learning is not without its pitfalls, and we really help our customers navigate this. So this means using things like tensor processing units, which is basically purpose-built Google Silicon for uh, world-leading cost and energy efficiency. It includes using tools like uh, Kubeflow pipelines and TensorFlow Extended for real end-to-end -end ML ops. And we also apply a set of AI principles uh, to really ensure that all applications of AI are, are ethical and, and useful to humans. As an example, with their data and applications in Google Cloud, King can really benefit from a lot of synergies when it comes to machine learning on GCP. So, there's also a few differentiated customer journeys that I'd like to highlight. And the first is that customers choose Google Cloud to become cloud native. We know we need to change to stay competitive, but we have so much legacy baggage. How can Google help us? This is a common starting point. And together, we help our customers achieve flexibility in their business, reducing their costs, converting CapEx to OPEX, and this includes full data center takeouts, right? And it includes taking their legacy workloads like mainframe estates, Oracle estates, Windows estates, and bringing it all to Google Cloud. We also help our key customers drive broad digital transformation across their companies, radical change, such as helping financial institutions build an entirely new modern bank outside the legacy estates. As an example, uh, Nokia is beginning the journey to migrate their global data centers to Google Cloud, really reinventing their operations and setting them up for the next 20 years of growth. Another differentiated customer journey is building for a multi-cloud future. We want to be able to run our business anywhere, but we don't want to lock ourselves in and get stuck on a given platform. This is a very rational desire, and we work with our customers to really fu future-proof uh, their business. And so with uh, tools like Anthos, uh, we really make their migration a safe choice for the next 20 years to come, really making sure that they have uh, access to innovation anywhere where they might run. And we do this without locking our customers into proprietary APIs. So we make it easy for them to build and run applications anywhere on any cloud, on-prem, and on the edge. And we build on open source APIs, meaning that they can run their workloads wherever they want. As an example, KeyBank can handle intensely bursty workloads without really being limited to only doing that in Google Cloud. The final differentiated journey I'll mention is the partnerships that we build with our customers. And 
how can we team up with all of Google to drive our industry forward, to become more innovative, and to find synergies across our business? This is a, a common question. And you probably know that Alphabet has a broad portfolio of companies and products beyond Google Cloud, right? Pro products and companies like uh, the Stadia streaming platform, right? Chrome, uh, Maps, the ads ecosystem, the Android and the Play Store ecosystems, right? We have YouTube, uh, there's our X Moonshot Swing, there's Search, Photos, Workspace, and many more, right? So for large enterprises, there are a lot of potential synergies that can be created uh, across the business when you look at all the touch points uh, with Alphabet. And this uh, is especially important when you consider it and combine it with uh, our market leadership in these areas such as um, Kubernetes, data, machine learning, networking, sustainability, and so on. At Google, we also love a good challenge and we partner up with our key customers to really solve for their industry challenges together. And it could be within financial services, retail, telecom, manufacturing, uh, you name it. And partnering with a company uh, and a, a research pioneer like Google uh, can really advance what our customers are able to accomplish in a short amount of time. As an example, Telecom Italia, or TIM, is partnering with Google Cloud on really modernizing Italy's entire digital landscape. So hopefully that gives you some color on how we at Google Cloud help our customers solve for their challenges, big and small. And so David, now that we have this background, why did Near4j choose to build Aura on GCP? Well, when we started, uh, Neo4j saw a lot of the same differentiators that you're talking about, David, when we began the build process for Aura. Uh, two of the things that you touched on that I think were very helpful for us as a company is this idea of building cloud-native applications, which Aura was from the beginning, and also the idea of um, a managed Kubernetes and best-in-class Kubernetes in the form of uh, GKE or Google, Google Kubernetes Engine. When we set out engineering Aura and putting all of those pieces together, those were great platform benefits that we really wanted to seize upon and use in our own build for this managed service. Another really important thing that we saw was white space. So in this particular picture here, there is an entire portfolio of database solutions that Google has. And there's already good stuff in the area of in-memory databases, relational databases, and warehouses like BigQuery. But we saw that there wasn't really any graph offering in Google's portfolio. And so we thought that there was a really great opportunity to show some complementarity there um, and to fit nicely into Google's strategy for working with open source partners and contributing that high performance graph native database. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely agree that, that Near4j is very complementary uh, to the Google Cloud ecosystem of, of products and services. And, and in particular, I think it's important to understand that, that Google Cloud has really an explicit strategy to, to partner with the best open source vendors, right? The companies like Near4j, Mongo, Confluent, Datastax, et cetera. And, and, and we really believe that the future of public cloud is in open source. We really think the future of public cloud is an open source. And, and the best way uh, to do that is to partner with the leading vendors in the field uh, in the areas that we're not innovating in. So some areas Google is definitely innovating in like Kubernetes, machine learning, uh, data, et cetera. Um, in, in some of these uh, other areas, uh, for, for example, uh, graph databases, um, I think this is a fantastic um, complementary partnership. So uh, another thing that we saw at the time was Google's motion and desire to help some of their customers really modernize their infrastructure. And I think that resonated with some of us at Neo4j. We often find customers that are starting off in a lift and shift kind of emotion where they are taking existing infrastructure that they have on-prem and then basically moving it over as is into a cloud environment. 
But when you think about some of the benefits that the cloud has to offer, that's the beginning rather than the end of the journey. And Google's had this focus on cloud native modernization. And so in our business with Neo4j, the way that that often manifests is that people first come to us and they might talk about replacing an existing relational database with a graph database. And usually when they do that, they're trying to improve fraud detection, they're trying to put in place a recommender system or and those types of classic graph use cases. That's a great starting point. And then at some point they may take their on-premise deployment and then move it over to a cloud platform like Google. But there's a lot of additional opportunities that come when enterprises modernize their setup. So uh, Google has all of these rich managed services in the ecosystem. And so you know, in 2021, that comes to things like managed ML platforms like AutoML. And we have always seen that there's tremendous potential to take some of the graph features and then add them on to those cloud platform benefits. So that would look like using graph data science in tandem with things like AutoML. But that's not a lift and shift motion. That's really fundamentally a modernization um, of the way folks build applications together with the cloud. Yeah, and definitely. And uh, I like that you mentioned AutoML also. I think uh, combining graph databases with our, our large scale systems like AutoML, like BigQuery, uh, really has the potential of, of, of enhancing the capabilities to create value from the data that you already have, right? Uh, and I think machine learning and, and graph databases both are kind of excellent at, at that. Um, and, and it kind of comes down to combining, right, this kind of quantitative technology like data warehousing, machine learning, right, uh, with with the more kind of qualitative technologies like graph databases. And, and I think at the end of the day, it just gives our customers more options to, to solve for their business. Uh, absolutely, David. Uh, all right, then. So we've covered a lot of ground so far. Um, when we, when we talk about how Neo4j fits this graph role for, for the Google platform, this isn't hypothetical, it's real today. And so on this slide, we've got a screenshot of Aura in the Google Cloud Marketplace. Uh, if you're watching this right now, you can go out to the marketplace, you can uh, purchase a subscription, which doesn't cost anything, just the usage for Aura Professional. And then you can subscribe to Aura, uh, enable it for an AP, enable the API for a given Google project and get started using it in a few minutes. Um, so you, you don't have to wait. Plenty of companies have already done this. So on this particular picture here, I pulled in a couple of the different companies. So earlier today, you may have heard from Kay and he detailed all of the different um, uh, companies and use cases, but I wanna draw out three that particularly resonate for me. So Levi chose Aura Enterprise to help them drive agility and sustainability as part of their product development process. APX in Switzerland uses us to manage a dense, complicated network of financial regulations to help their clients manage a, a regulatory space. And Boston Scientific uses Aura to analyze and track manufacturing data in their supply chain. Uh, in fact, in the case of Boston Scientific, you may have seen Eric Westby's presentation earlier today, where they talked in a little bit more depth about how they're using uh, Aura Enterprise together. So, you know, with that, I, I want to really thank everybody for taking the time today. Um, we're really excited to see what you do with these joint platforms in 2021. And uh, I'd like to open it up for questions and answers. Great. Thank you so much, David and David. Um, that was a great presentation. And we have had uh, several questions that have come in. And I want to remind the audience that if they'd like to submit a question, they can do so by typing it into the questions tab located at the top of their screen. If we by chance don't get to your question, someone from Neo4j will reach out to you, or you can send an email to webinar at neo4j.com and we'll get you pointed in the right direction. But let's get started with what we've uh, received so far. And this is kind of going back to what you touched on, David Allen, about um, mm -hmm. modernization. So, so once a company has lifted and shifted their systems, what comes next? How do they modernize? Actually, David Montag, would you like to take that one? Um, yeah, sure. So uh, I think there really isn't kind of a, a one size fits all uh, to this question. 
Um, and, and here we really need to have a conversation to discover kind of what, what fits your company uh, and your goals best. Um, however, I think one way to look at it is to kind of decide how far do you want to go, right? And you can look at it in, in potentially three steps, right? So maybe you're only looking for, let's say, some tactical type of, uh, of improvement journey, right? Cutting costs maybe by, by moving you know, to more efficient infrastructure, but then continuing to work in the same way, right? It's more of a tactical approach. Um, then uh, as a next step, you might be looking at more kind of strategic uh, investment, right? So for example, looking at, at leveraging some of the cloud native benefits that, that I mentioned earlier in the presentation, right? So, so once your infrastructure is on Google Cloud, you actually have superb integration uh, to all these kind of cloud native uh, managed systems like, for example, BigQuery, right? Or Kubernetes engine, right? And, and we uh, typically sit down and build a joint roadmap with customers uh, to to understand what fits them best and, and understand where should you start leaning uh, on some of our managed products to, to free up your time and resources for, for other things in, in your business. Um, and then lastly, as a transformational step, if you're looking for that type of transformational change, then that's really about starting to change how you work uh, as a company, right? And really updating your culture and your workforce for kind of this cloud native world that's that's looming on the horizon for, for most companies, I think. And, and so, for example, um, implementing a, a modern data strategy um, really has, has the potential to invigorate the company with... Um, with more kind of agility and, and, and new ways of working, uh, maybe closer to what a digital native uh, or how a digital native uh, might work, right? And, and I think some leaders really uh, realize or have an urgency that if they set this uh, this company on, on a path toward toward a more cloud native uh, way of working, then they their goal is typically to future-proof their business, right, for the next 20 years, and, and we can achieve that with them. Uh, but again, it's all about starting with how far do you want to go on that journey? Great, thank you for that uh, that deeper dive into modernization. Um, here's a question that has come up in numerous times, and that is, is Aura only available on Google Cloud? When we first developed Aura and put it out there in the wild, I would say it started on Google Cloud. Um, and the Aura professional offering as well as Aura Enterprise is available on Google Cloud today, as I said, but it's not limited just to Google Cloud. So uh, we're right now in the process of bringing that to AWS, which is going to happen shortly. And I think Neo4j as a company recognizes that enterprises are all over the map in their cloud adoption. Some of them are in fact multi-cloud and have good reasons to be so. And so I, I put it simply like this, Neo4j Aura started with Google Cloud, but it, it's going to expand over time to, to cover most of the most popular cloud platforms where customers live. Great, thank you, David. And it looks like we have time for about one more question. So I wanna get this in. Um, here's one that asks, which industries does Google work with? And in particular, what's your experience with financial services? Okay, so uh, I think I rattled off a few industries earlier, but basically we, we work with, with customers in, in all major verticals, right? So finance, uh, retail, media entertainment, right? Telecom, um, um, energy, uh, manufacturing, uh, healthcare, life sciences, uh, gaming, um, and, and last but not least, public sector also. Um, so I, I think when it comes to to, um, to financial services and 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 banking, um, I mean we work with major financial institutions, right? Like uh, Lloyd's Banking Group, HSBC, um, Citibank, Goldman Sachs, ANZ, Charles Schwab, um, Fidelity. Uh, Bloomberg, I mean, you name it. Um, and, and we recently signed a, a multi-year partnership with uh, with Deutsche Bank to really uh, co-innovate and modernize and build what is the bank of the future, right? Uh, that's super exciting. Um, I think I should also add that if we look at financial services, we have a uniquely strong position when it comes to cloud security, uh, which is so important, especially within the, the, the financial services uh, sector. Um, 
because everything at Google is really built uh, and designed uh, with security in mind on, on day one. It's really a core pillar of everything we do uh, at Google. Uh, so we, for example, encrypt all data uh, by default. You can't even disable it. This was a first uh, in the industry. Um, and, and it's just one example of all the things we do in terms of giving you uh, audit trails on your data um, and, and obviously holding all the required cert certifications and, and, and compliance um, checks that, that you might want in, in this sector, right? So talking about like uh, FedRAMP, uh, uh, SOC compliance, ISO 20, 27001 and all the, you know, the family uh, and, and countless more. So I think, yeah, financial services, uh, it's a, it's a, I think it's a great vertical for, uh, for us. Oh, thank you so much. And that Bank of the Future project sounds super exciting. Yeah, it is. All right. Well, we have reached um, the top of our time for today. I want to thank David Allen, David Montauk, of course, from Google. And the audience, if you will stay tuned, our next session will be starting in just a few minutes. Again, thanks, David and David. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.